The single biggest sort of attribute that Ken has that stands out in my mind absolutely is the work ethic. Everyone in our caucus knows that. If, um, if Ken's going to be in charge of a file, he's going to know what's going on down to details. And everybody always has a comfort when, when he's working on something because of that. And, um, you know, a good work ethic will take a person a long way, and, uh, and Ken certainly is a shining example. He knows that file, finance, or anything else he puts his mind to uh, inside and out. He's uh, one of the most thorough uh, people I've ever met and a fabulous finance minister. Ken is, um, is uh, not only a good friend of mine, he's a good colleague of mine. So uh, if I have any political questions I can ask him, and if there are days I'm just plain frustrated, I can talk to him. In fact, there are probably times that I, will, I question whether I, I'm in the right place. And you need somebody in this building, somebody you can talk to who says, you know, you're just having a bad day, or things just don't look, that's really not the way it is, but you have to be able to talk to somebody. I always recognized with his roles, uh, both as minister and as deputy premier, he was very, very busy. But if I needed a couple minutes, he always made time for me. And that meant a lot to me. And so Ken is just a great source of advice. He's, as I said, he's very, very smart and he gets the politics and, and uh, he's got tremendous instincts and, uh, and very good judgment. Ken has a very loud voice. I sat beside him for a lot of years and I really, I think he should pay for my next hearing aids because it really does. Uh, he has a voice that carries. There's times when it's a bit an advantage because if people don't hear me, then he'll take my very wise thoughts and say it again in a louder voice. We were very pleased to report that the summaries which we had forecasted at budget were going to have a surplus of $149 million in fact, Mr. Speaker, that surplus is well over 400 million. So I don't understand the member opposite. One day, one day in this legislature, he stands and he says, you have to budget only on summaries. Right. Well, the summaries clearly indicate at mid-year that we were going to have a $400 million surplus, Mr. Speaker. That's who Ken is, and that's why, that's why we love him. He's both sides of the coin. He can be loud and boisterous, and he has a, he has a real uh, strong heart. I the situation in Ukraine, Mr. Speaker, remains dear to the hearts of many in our province. It is my firm belief that we must all work together to assist Ukraine's emergence to a future of prosperity and freedom. In closing, Mr. Speaker, we stand together with the people of Ukraine. Mea razum s narodom Ukraine. Thank you. He's actually a good role model for anybody who would want to be in politics because you can be yourself and Ken is both. He can be a, a, a loud, bolsterous person or he can cry and he can carry that emotion and give that emotion to all of us as well. So um, I am very fortunate to call him a friend. You know, Ken, as I mentioned earlier, typically shows really good judgment, except in his choice of hockey teams. And so I was thinking that since Ken's had such a positive influence on me, I, I think maybe I'd like to have a positive influence on Ken. You could consider changing who you cheer for in hockey. And if you'd like to talk to me, maybe I could come up with some suggestions on what team you could cheer for instead of the Leafs. I guess is thank you for everything that you've done for this party, that you've done for the government, that you've done for the people of Saskatchewan, and thank you for everything you've done for me. Ooh, it burns a little, Dad. <laughs> First you got a co-op number and now I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> I don't know what to say about Ken without getting emotional. I really don't worry. We've been seatmates for a long time since I've been had this awesome privilege of this job. We've been seatmates and become I hope, I mean, for my part, just great friends. Uh, he's like a, an older, a very, a quite a bit older brother. <laughs> He really is, and a, and a mentor. And ladies and gentlemen, you, you know him well, but if you knew him like we all know him, even uh, if you knew him like 
the, the public service knows him, that his stakeholders as the finance minister and the education minister know him, you would agree with me immediately, as you likely do, that he would be an outstanding premier for this province, just as he has been an amazing deputy premier. Um, the credibility he gives this organization every single day uh, is very hard for me to describe. I am not going to go on much longer because the other thing we do as seatmates is we kind of we break down too much, Ken, um, and uh, we kind of try to buck each other up. And uh, um, I, I just can't thank you enough personally and on behalf of our party. Would you please uh, welcome to the stage to accept his token, uh, the, the man who helped build the party in the province, our deputy leader, Deputy Premier Ken Corvette. Thank you very much. It's, it's an honor to be here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As I said to Brad just now, so which guy's showing up at the microphone, the hard-nosed you uh, NDP you stink, or the softy who cries at his table? Well, uh, I want to begin by, first of all, just saying, you know, decisions come, don't come easy. And there's always, I think there's two key words when you make the, the kinds of decisions that many of you make. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis than we made. It's all, about, it's all about vision, and it's all about risk. Vision has to be there. You know, uh, there was a, a lot of things said today that uh, I'm not going to repeat, because I will, I will not uh, make it through this, but, you know, we had a vision. We had a vision. It was reinforced by many. Uh, I was the last person, probably, to come on board, I think. Um, and uh, I appreciated that from, from my uh, seven colleagues that taught, were on, in discussions who basically said, we're not going to tell Ken, or we're not going to ask him through the months of May, June, July in uh, 1997, because he's probably, if he's cornered by a media person and they ask him, are you part of a meeting, he would probably say yes, and that would destroy everything. So thank you to my colleagues for keeping me out in there in the dark. And uh, I, knew, I knew things had to change, and my dad, as has been mentioned by June, uh, said, this is the way you're going to do it. You have to do it that night. And that's why on August uh, 8th, I was part of this. Never looked back, because uh, the Premier has already mentioned it. You know, when, when eight people take that risk, and we were, we were hit by Romano and others, Clay Serbia, a fellow I've known all my life, Clay would say, I've been out to Buchanan, I've been out to Kenora. Ken, you're not coming back. There is no chance you're coming back. You're, you're done. And, you know, you, you travel throughout the, uh, the provinces we did, and you have that feeling that you've done something right, that this is indeed going to pay off. And then you listen to Romano in the house, and you listen to Clay Serby, and you think, oh, gee, maybe I didn't see this right. But the outcome of the 99 election, and the uh, Premier's already read those, uh, those uh, plurality differences. I'll tell you, you know, on, uh, on a certain, well, the, it was June 21, I know exactly the date, June 21 of 1995, when the CTV at about 1020 had declared Ron Harper elected because they had made a mistake. I always seem to be involved with correcting mistakes, aren't, isn't that right, Premier? Uh, and then about 10 minutes later, they said, no, it's too, too soon to call. And then 10 minutes after that, they declared me elected. And I had the smallest plurality of all 58 MLAs elected in 1995, and that was 50 votes. So wh who do I think? Probably those 50 people in Kenora Pelly. <laughs> and I don't know who they were, but I can tell you that if it wasn't for the uh, people of Kenora Pelly, who, uh, you know, I wasn't given a chance to win. Probably many of us on that liberal banner weren't given much of a chance to win because, uh, you know, even, even the leader at that time, Linda Haverstock, uh, the, the executive director said, she's not coming out to your constituency. We don't have any money for you. You don't stand much of a chance, but do the best you can because you might have better opportunity the next election. Well, I don't, I don't go into things without giving it my best. So, you know, I want to thank the people of Kenora Pelly for that first step, probably want to thank Jim Melanchuk for the second step. <laughs> and a little bit about that. 
as a, as a naive, well, probably year and a half in, 1996, the uh, leadership of the Liberal Party in 1996, someone talked me into it, and I decided to seek the, the, the leadership. So that was, that, was our, that was our, you know, large spend to become the leader of the Liberal Party. And of course, there were many candidates, and it came down to uh, the second last ballot, where I believe I, I fell off because of a seven-vote difference. In other words, if four people would have voted for me rather than Jim Melanchuk or Tom Hengen, it might have changed things. Yeah, it might have changed things. And uh, you know what? At, a, at an event like that, there's always somebody that has to lead. There's always somebody that has to do something different. And I can tell you it was June Drowdy, because we had the, ref we had the recognition that indeed the race was over. I was not going to be on the final ballot. And we walked into this side area, and there were these metal chairs. And this is another thing I didn't say it about June Drowdy on those comments about her. She picks up a metal chair, and she fires this chair. She fired it into the wall, and it broke. So we all looked at one another, and, and we just all burst out laughing. <laughs> And that was it. That was uh, the start of uh, the next chapter, the Saskatchewan Party chapter. And, you know, there's so many people that have played uh, a role. I want to thank Bill and Bob. I think the first two people who started talking about the party and why we should uh, join, uh, to Ben Hepner, I, I gave a speech in the legislature. I was an education critic at the time. And uh, Ben Hepner, of course, was education critic for the PCs, <laughs> and he basically, and I, I should have checked answer to what exact words he said, but he basically stood up and said, ditto to what the member for Kenora Pelly said. <laughs> and he sat down. <laughs> so, I, you know, I think we realized that our, our philosophies, our ideas were, were close, and it was, it was time to move forward. I, I want to thank Ellen Hermanson and Premier Wall. You know, I've been fortunate to be uh, either the interim leader or the deputy leader or now the deputy premier with the entire, you know, group. Uh, the leadership provided first by Ellen and then by, by, by uh, Premier Wall. Now, I'll say Brad. Uh, Brad is just phenomenal. Uh, I want to, I wanna, there's going to be another thank you, but I just want to mention something, and, and I think it's the, it's the leadership and the importance of Premier Wall in Saskatchewan and in Canada. I was in Montreal and Toronto on Tuesday and Wednesday, or Wednesday and Thursday, speaking with the, all of the financial leaders, all the banks, RBC, CBIC. There are three new presidents in, in three of the major banks across Canada in the last uh, probably six, seven months. All three gave me at least one hour of their time, and they all said, we're coming to Saskatchewan because we want to talk with your premier because of all of the great reasons about Saskatchewan and about the leadership of, of Premier Wall. Man, it made me proud to be part of his team. My final thank you, of course, is I've already said all the people in Kenora Pelly and all my staff and everybody else, but my final thank you is to Gail. Uh, you've been retired already, a superannuated teacher for six years. I'm going to join you. Thanks. Some people think the political history of our party is owed to the fact that a portion of the previous Liberal group helped found uh, the Saskatchewan party and make it possible. The truth is it was all the Liberals. Eventually, of course, we worked hard to earn their support in the election campaign, but even back to 1997 or earlier, because those Liberals that probably didn't join the SAS party right away may well have been the group that made the decision not to choose this man as their leader. And had he been the leader of the Liberal party, I think that I, I'm not sure the history would have been the same. So uh, we're, we're grateful that all things work together for good. Just before we, we wrap up, uh, uh, folks, you know, uh, I, I think it's important that we do this, uh, that uh, whenever it's suitable, whenever the timing is right at a convention, that we would remember our history. We remember our history to be motivated to continue in the present and to continue in the future and to build a legacy and build a party that is worthy of the courage they displayed uh, and the step forward they took to create political history and, and 
a brand new government, and, and I think hopefully change this province for the better uh, f forever. So um, one more round of applause, then one more quick bit of business, and we'll conclude this part.